I'm Faith and welcome to Faith's Take where I talk about anything and everything that I find interesting and welcome to my review of Toy Story 4, uh, the latest Pixar release and latest uh, installment in the Toy Story series. First off I want to thank everyone that actually sent in comments and tweets asking me to review this because uh, if you haven't either been around for a while, just don't know, and you're just here mostly for the rift tracks and mystery science stuff, uh, way back in uh, mid-2016, my first, maybe second, non-mystery science and rift tracks related video was why I hate Toy Story 3. And uh, that is my most quote-unquote controversial video if you look at the like to dislike ratio. And so I had a lot of people from all sides, whether they love or hate Toy Story 3, asking me if I loved or hated this movie and just what my overall thoughts were. Uh, so thank you all for asking, though. I think that's really cool. And if you guys ever have ideas or movies you want me to review, just please do let me know. You know, if you... <laughs> I'm sure it's a horrible video. I haven't watched it probably since I posted it three years ago or very, very soon after. So if you want to know my, my thoughts on Toy Story 3, it's mostly there. But I just felt like... You know, the whole point of the first two movies is for the kids to love Andy and Andy to love them, but he gives all of them, including Woody, away so easily, even after in uh, Toy Story 2, his mom insists that Woody's a family toy and that's why he's not for sale in the yard sale and stuff. And, and um, I think all of us, or most of us at least, have at least one toy we've kept since childhood. Um, we all have our own Woody, a special, whether it's stuffed animal, or action figure, or something that we loved, or was handmade by a relative, or something that we still keep. Um, and so it was shocking for Andy to just give them away, especially because of the first two films in the franchise, obviously. And uh, not just the ending, but the film as a whole, I just really dislike. But again, my full thoughts are in that video. So Toy Story 4, did I like it, or did I did I love it, did I hate it, did I, what, what did I think about it? Um, as an entire film, I didn't hate it. I think it has a lot of problems. I didn't hate it until that ending, man, and we will we will get to that. Um, overall, I overall I think it is a better movie than the third one, for at least for my tastes. I'll put that out there. I think the ending does the same thing that the, that the third one did in terms of taking not just the lessons but the themes of the first two movies and kind of burning them to the ground. I will get, I'll get to that last, That's because that's like the biggest thing I'll be talking about here. It's been out for a few weeks, so I hope you guys don't mind if there are spoilers in here, or since there'll be spoilers in here. So first, let's talk about like the characters overall, the main few characters, um, and a few of my notes I have here, because I saw this film, as well as The Lion King, which I'll also be reviewing soon, uh, at the theater, or at a drive-in theater with my parents and sisters just the other day, and it was really fun, uh, even though the movie's... <laughs> but we'll get to that. Um, so, first off, this one I do want to mention first. If you've seen the trailers for this, you know that there's a new character named Forky, who is a spork that has been transformed into a toy by the toy's new girl, Bonnie, in, like, her first day of kindergarten. And he's voiced by Tony Hale. And he's actually really good. If you watch the trailer, it does him no justice. This really seems like a um, Olaf in Frozen situation where the trailers, they're like, look at this sidekick, look at this new character, and it's kind of in your face. But when you actually watch it, uh, Tony Hale in this and Josh Gad in Frozen, they really um, play them, like kind of underplay them a little bit. They're not all in your face like that. Forky is... Um, really well voiced by Tony. I think he did a really genuinely an amazing job. And he was really well animated for having such a simple face. Um, like at one point my sister Maddie just like chuckles when nothing, like nothing happened. I was like, what? She's like, Forky's dumb green. Like she just, it was just funny. Just the look on his face would be funny. So Forky was, un or, I'm sorry, not unsurprisingly, very surprisingly, I think one of the best realized characters in the film. He's also super innocent because he was literally just born and knows... I shouldn't be sentient. Also, I will say, I'll, I'll give Pixar a point here, um, to, again, to an extent. I thought they were going to make this whole movie about, oh, the importance of being sentient, and even if you're not what society said you could be, you can be something different. I thought that's what they were going to do with this because of the character of Forky being so heavily advertised, but they didn't. That was not in this at all. There was no um, talk about sentience and life and bringing things to life or anything, which which in a way I think was good in terms of what they did with the film. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, why, why isn't it explained? But, but 
they've never explained things that well in Toy Story. Like, why do the toys, you know, hide from people when clearly nothing happens if they're seen other than people freak out? But like, you know, like Sid sees them in the first one, nothing happens. So I, I don't know. But Forky was very good. We'll keep going with the new characters for a second. Key and Peel are amazing. That's literally one of my notes, just Key and Peel are amazing. They're super fun. They were the ones I, would look, I looked forward to the most based on the trailers because it's Key and Peel and they're going to be funny. Animation on them also was really, really good because they're, they're plush toys, so they're all fluffy. They were, uh, I think they're just called, named like Ducky and Bunny, and I would totally get Ducky and Bunny plush toys. They're very cute. Um, and they're really fun, and they bring some good levity in the film when it's a little dry um, at times. Like, I would, it's been a long time since I've seen the third one, so, but based on the ones I can remember the most, which are the first two, and this one, this is probably the least funny overall, uh, especially because a couple, one sort of running joke does not land at all with me, but again, we'll get to that when we talk about Buzz here in a minute. But um, Key and Peele were great, they were hilarious. Honestly, I wish we'd seen even more of them, because they're, they're in a, a decent chunk, but I wish we'd seen more. Honestly, I kind of wish we'd even seen Forky a little more, because he keeps like basically getting separated from Woody, and so it's like we don't see as much of him as we probably could have. Uh, and the villains, I <laughs> Lion King played first at this drive-in, and I literally have the note here, if I can uh, see it again here. Uh, that the antique toys, because they end up in this antique toy shop, the antique toys are scarier than Scar in that movie, which is true. And again, I'll get more into that when I review Lion King, probably right after this, but you'll see it maybe a couple days after this. Um, the, the, it's mainly this antique doll named Gabby Gabby that's supposed to be like a pull string doll like Woody that talks. Um, and she has a few ventriloquist dummy sidekicks that can't talk because they're ventriloquist dummies and it's like, <laughs> like they're they're very very creepy and gabby herself is also very creepy um but when we get into talking about the story a little more i'm going to talk about what i really liked about her and something that it mixed up a little bit um she was an interesting villain but i will hold off on her for a minute buzz is an idiot in this movie i feel like th i mean i was on the way home i was like just, just thinking about this movie, and there were a couple things I realized. This was the first one. Um, Buzz is too capable of a character, so they have to handicap him in every movie. Like, I, I realized that, and I was like, they totally do that on purpose, don't they? Like, they can't have Buzz be fully functioning in every single movie because he's too capable. In the first one, he didn't realize he was a toy. That's literally the plot, so that's that's fine. In the second one, he gets beat up and replaced by the fake Buzz and then has to find his way back to the group. In the third one, he gets stuck in Spanish mode. And then this one, he's literally just an idiot because there's a scene um, in the first act where Woody's trying to keep Forky's spirits up, keep him alive, basically, because Forky's like, I'm not supposed to be alive. And Woody's like, yeah, you are. And Buzz is like, why are you doing this? You know, why is, he's like, I could help. Like, let me help you. And Woody's like, no, the little voice inside me wouldn't, you know, stop nagging me basically if I didn't take care of this. And Buzz is like, a little voice inside you? And Woody's like, yeah, like your conscience. And Buzz doesn't know what that is and takes it literally as in like the, the, the um, voice lines they have as toys. Like when Buzz presses his buttons or you pull Woody's uh, pull string. And I'm just like, has has Buzz ever been, has like our Buzz, not the, once Buzz realizes he's a toy basically in the first one, from then through the rest of the franchise, has Buzz ever been that stupid to worldly things like conscience, consciences and stuff? I don't think so. And that is, that was a huge problem I had because that is a running gag and even plot point with Buzz through the movie. Almost every single major choice he makes in the rest of the movie is only based on what, like, he presses the buttons on his chest and what it tells him to, vaguely tells him to do. And that just did not work for me. And clearly, we're supposed to find it funny, and it does not hit for me. If it was a character, I don't even like characters that are just fully stupid that do things like that most of the time. But at least if it was a stupider character... It wouldn't be honestly as like insulting as it kind of is to the audience and to Buzz as a character. Like I really love Buzz Lightyear as a character. Tim Allen's performance is amazing and overall Buzz is a super capable character. Um, the way he leads the group in Toy Story 2 to find Woody, you know, it's like he's a capable character and I just feel like every movie they have to get rid of him or nerf him basically in some 
way because he would be too capable for the plot and I think they easily did that here. Also, uh, before I get to kind of the main, the main duo of this film, if you loved literally any of Andy's original toys, even any of Bonnie's toys from Toy Story 3, uh, I feel sorry for you because they each get maybe two lines. Um, very, 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 very few things. Jesse does one plot relevant thing and that's it. Um, they're all stuck in an RV on the side of the road in a small town doing nothing until like the last 10 minutes. Um, and even then they're all getting like one or two lines a piece at most and then it's over. Um, they do very little. There's no growth for any of them, like, yeah, right. And you can tell the writers did not care about them at all. Honestly, I think the writers solely cared about Woody and Bo in this movie. And maybe some of the new characters. Maybe Forky a little, maybe the villains a little. Um, but if you were not Woody, Bo, or a new character for this film, they did not care about you. Um, again, look at what they, what they did to Buzz. He's literally a different person through most of this film for no reason other than the plot demands it. But but then we get to Woody and Bo. Woody is obsessed with keeping Forky alive, first of all, which the others kind of tell him to give up basically at some point. And I'm like, in the toy world, that's kind of like telling someone, you know your friend that's suicidal, maybe you should stop trying to help them. I'm like, what? Like, And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say if a person's really suicidal, it's up to just their friends to save them, but <laughs> at the same time, I don't think you should discourage the friends from helping this person, and that's kind of what they're doing, because Forky's literally just trying to throw himself away, because he's like, I'm not supposed to be a toy, and everyone's like, Woody, why don't you just give up on this? And I'm like, this is a living being. Woody is just obsessed with, I shouldn't, I mean, yes, it's obsession, I guess, but like, we've been taught through all these films that the purpose of toys is to keep children happy and um that that has been such an important thing it had to be what buzz learned in the first one jesse had had issues with that in the past but came to realize she could have a new family in the second one and then all the toys ended up with the new family in the third one for better or for worse but they all end up with a child and with that child's family and that's like the purpose that toys are supposed to serve in this universe. It's been established for literally three films that that's a, even technically if you're a toy at the daycare, you're still making kids happy basically. In, in this movie, it like really wants to uproot that and it's like Woody really wants to make Bonnie happy even though Bonnie's been neglecting him for the past like week or something. They said not even that long honestly, not even that long. Um, but they make a big deal out of it in the first act. Like, Bonnie's ignoring Woody. Bonnie doesn't really care about Woody right now. She gives his sheriff badge to Jesse at one point, who then gives it back to, to Woody. Um, but she's scared about her first day of kindergarten. Her parents won't let her take a toy. Even after she's kind of left him to the dust for the last week or two, as, as the movie implies, Woody jumps in her backpack to go to school with her and does like kind things for her, like make sure she can have crafting supplies and stuff when none of the other kids will play with her and things like that. Um, all without her seeing or knowing he's there. He does this all for no credit, no actual direct love from the child knowing that it's him. He's just doing this because he's a good person who loves his kid and wants to love and comfort and be there for this child. That's his purpose in life. That's what it's been for the past three movies. Even after Andy abandoned him the way that he did, if you look at it from, from that angle as I do, even after all that, he still just wants to make his kid happy no matter what, even when he's not, not even not the favorite anymore, when he's like barely even like noticed by them anymore. And, you know, I personally, I was watching that thinking that's a super noble thing to do if you're in, in Woody's position in the way it is in this film. Um, but the whole film is like, you know, that's where, that's where Bo comes in. We'll get to her then, I guess. And, and Bo is, she reminded me of Rey from Force Awakens, where she's like a scavenger and she has a staff and she has a bunch of like little things she uses to get around in this, in this small town Woody finds her in. Because I guess I haven't talked about the plot that much at all. Um, so I guess I'll get to that too. Bonnie's family goes on a road trip. 
uh, after her like kindergarten orientation day or whatever in an RV. She brings all the toys. They end up in this small town. That, that's basically all you need to know. And, and Woody and Forky end up in this antique shop and on this little playground in this small town. And um, Woody ends up meeting back with Bo Peep. And we get to see a flashback at the very, very, very beginning of the movie that tells us what happened. That nine years ago, Bo and like the lamp was given away to another family. Also, the timeline is super freaking wonky because if that's nine years from, from the beginning of this movie, by now, Andy would only be about 19, right? If he was 18 in the last one, he'd be about 19 in this one, we assume. So nine years ago, he would have been 10, and maybe he was seven in, like, the first film. And Molly was a baby in the first film. So by the time of this flashback, Molly would probably be four or five. She's, like, 10. Like, she was way older than she should have been based on this timeline. I just want to point that out. The timeline of this thing is super sketch, but anyway... At least with the rest of the franchise. Anyway, he meets up with Bo, or the in the beginning, I'm sorry, in the beginning, Bo gets is gonna be given away out of nowhere, basically. Woody has a chance at some point before the guy's gonna drive away with the box. He has a chance to either get in the box with her, or he said, We could take you out and hide you, and she's like, No, I'll just go. But you should come with me. And I'm like, why don't you stay there then though? Like, she's making him choose between her and Andy and all of their friends when she isn't even choosing to stay with her friends but has the choice. I thought that was way, like a really harsh move on her part to be like, I'm just gonna accept my fate, but you can come with me. Like it just seemed kind of, I, I don't know, I just did not like that. Um, but Woody obviously chooses Andy. And so Bo, after only being at apparently her new house for, I think she says a year or maybe two years, for a shortish period of time, then ends up in the antique store in the small town that, that the, the family's in, and then decided to stop like collecting dust on the shelves and became a lost toy, a lot, along with a lot of other toys that either get lost by kids on the playground or that run away from the antique store. And they just kind of live in this small town now, like having adventures or whatever. You know, Woody's like, but it's important to have a kid. And she's like, you're still too hung up on having kids, blah, blah. And I'm like, but it's been established. Like, that's why these toys exist. Like, at first, they have a pretty good dynamic, I think. And he reminds her how important she was to Molly because... Apparently when Molly, again, would have had to have been an infant, was terrified of the dark and would cry every night until she got the Bo Peep lamp. And you see Bo Peep's face kind of shift as Woody's telling uh, one of Bo's new friends about that. And it kind of seems like it's settling in for her, like, maybe I was important. Maybe being a toy for a kid is important. <laughs> so it ends up being that Woody and Forky got separated. Forky is in the antique shop with the villain toys. And all the villain doll wants is a working voice box because hers was broken, at, like, as soon as she was built. It, it, she, like, came out uh, dysfunctional, basically. And she's like, if only I had a voice. There's this girl that comes to the antique store a lot because, like, her grandma owns it. And she's like, that girl would want me. And so she basically holds Forky hostage, knowing Woody will come back for him. Uh, and she wants his working voice box. So Bo is like, oh, well, your kid's so important, so that's why this fork is so important or whatever. And I'm like, again, Forky's literally a living being. Even if Bonnie was out of the question, why would it be weird if Woody wanted to save him? Like, you know, if it was Buzz, I don't know if, I, I think she'd probably be okay with Woody trying to save him. So I, I don't know why oh, it's because of your kid it was such a big deal with her in terms of saving Forky. How about just saving another living toy? I really disliked Bo's attitude through a lot of this. Like, some of it I understood. Like, why Jessie was so sad in Toy Story 2 and was worried about, um, or had kind of basically settled on the fact that she was going to be in a museum instead of loved by a kid because of what had happened with her previous kid. And so I could see why Bo would become embittered or, or, or at least disenchanted with the idea of being a kid's toy but the fact that like she has to chastise Woody so much for it and at one point she's like I'm not the one that's lost it's basically saying oh you're so obsessed with your kid you're you're lost and Woody's like this is all I have and I'm like but as a toy like not only is, is that his purpose in life 
But, like, if that's the way he chooses to live his life, then leave him alone. Like, this, again, it's not even just, they focus so much, so much. And this really irked me about it. They focus so much on, oh, it's about the kid. Oh, it's about your kid. You're obsessed with your kid. You're obsessed with not having a kid. And, and she doesn't even, like, they don't even, I mean, Woody doesn't even consider the fact that he is about a dozen other friends that are a part of that family now. And that, like, doesn't come up, I don't remember it coming up once, where she's like, look, if you were doing this for Buzz and Jesse and Bullseye, I could understand you wanting to go back to that family or whatever but if it's only for bonnie blah blah that would have at least made more sense but she's like completely saying oh you're obsessed with your kid and he's like all i have is this kid but like they're both completely i mean i'm kind of upset at woody for that too like they're both completely throwing the others out of the question when woody has known all the like regardless of the kid he's with he's known most of these toys for up to two decades at this point and anywhere between one to two decades for like all of them except like Bonnie's toys. Again, it's kind of like saying if you cared about literally any character that's not Woody or Bo, F you, you don't get to, they don't care about them. Like it kind of implies that neither of them, they're an afterthought besides for Bo it's herself and for Woody it's Bonnie and, and it doesn't make any sense that like they completely, it, you know why it, you know why it really doesn't make sense? Because it's literally just for the plot, just for the ending to work. Just like how Buzz's thing was just for the plot of, of him not making any sense. This whole thing about them literally forgetting all their friends is just so the plot can work and so Woody can look like he's too obsessed with Bonnie. Not that he's obsessed with the family that he's had for less 10 to 20 years of toys. And so here is where like the big big spoilers are gonna come in about the the endings um of, of these characters in this in this movie finally gabby gabby tells woody like do you remember all the good times you had with andy all the firsts that you had with him all the memories well i never got a kid at all and i want those memories too and she's like if i had a voice box i could do it so woody's like okay then as long as I can have Forky back unharmed, you can take my voice box. So Woody can't speak anymore, first of all. Like, or his toy, his string, I mean, he can speak, but you know what I mean. His, his string toy doesn't work anymore. Um, and hers does. She goes up to the little girl, um, or, you know, places herself in line of sight of the little girl to be taken by her. And the little girl decides not to take her. And Woody goes back to her and... She even says he can have the voice box back. He doesn't take it, but she says you can have it back. The one thing I liked about Gabby Gabby, even though she has a very similar path, if if the whole basis of these movies is kids need toys, toys need kids, almost all the villains are going to be toys that don't have kids, for the most part. You know, we had the Prospector and Lotso that have very similar spiteful outlooks on life. From the Prospector never having had a kid, and Lotso having had a kid and then being what he saw as abandoned by that kid. And so they're spiteful and they want to control other toys and be like, kids are garbage, blah, blah, blah. So for Gabby Gabby to A, still want a kid, but B, actually be sympathetic. And once she had what she wanted, she backed off. She let Woody and Forky go, no problem. And then when Woody comes back, she's like, you can have your voice box back. I give up, basically. And she was much more sympathetic than the past two villains have been, which at least set her apart from them, even though they all have kind of similar stories. Which, again, I, I don't love. There has to be a way you can make them even more different. But if you're gonna do almost the same thing again, um, they at least made her sympathetic, and I'll, I'll take that. But, but here's where things get confusing. So Woody and all the other toys that he's with, it's like Woody, Bo, um, the Key and Peel, <laughs> Forky, etc. Um, they're all gonna try to get her loved by a kid. And they find a way to do that. Uh, at first they're gonna bring her to Bonnie, and then they see another kid uh, in the midst of like the carnival that's been going on in town that's lost and so they set it up so the kid sees her and the kid takes her and that it implies like Gabby Gabby's gonna get the love she wants 
and the happy ending that she wants. It's kind of the inverse of what happens to the prospector in the second one. And and that that's fine. In fact, I think overall that's good and it's at least somewhat different than, than the past couple villains. But that really negates the end of the film, which then happens where um, uh, the, the toys are all going to go their separate ways again where Buzz, Woody, and Forky will go back in the RV with Bonnie's family and then Bo and Keen Peel and the other characters we've met so far um, will stay in the small town in like the, the park and the antique shop and whatever. If you couldn't see this coming already, I should have done a prediction video about this because I knew this would happen and it's what, especially for how controversial this ending ended up being the comments I got about this movie whether you, no matter how much you love or hate this franchise as a whole in each of the movies this ending was so controversial so many people were like I loved it so much I hate it so much it ends the franchise better than the third one it desecrates it no matter what you thought of the third one everyone was like completely split based on the comments I saw at least on this ending and I stayed spoiler free on purpose for when I for when I saw this but I had a feeling this is what was going to happen and it did Woody chooses to stay with Bo instead of going back with Bonnie and if this was genuinely all about a kid that he's known for a year versus the toy he was in love with for like a few years. Based on the timeline, it wouldn't be like a decade or anything, but like a few years. I, I could have been okay with it if that was literally the only choice being made. But it's not. He's literally leaving every other character this franchise has ever seen. And that is so gut-wrenchingly awful to me you know because the, the comfort we all had at the end of Toy Story 3 again whether you love it or hate it was that this new kid will be happy and if Andy wants to leave him fine heck with Andy but the toys still have each other I believe that like the theme of the like main song that was written for the third one is literally called we belong together and that even after all the horrors they went through the daycare after all the trials and tribulations they've gone through being Andy's toys to now being Bonnie's toys, they have each other no matter what. And that's not true. Woody was the most loyal, loving toy of the bunch and he leaves them for one toy. He leaves everyone else he knew and his kid. And it's just treated only as if he's really leaving Bonnie. And I hate that. It's so poorly executed. Buzz is like, Bonnie's gonna be okay. And Woody's like, well, okay, then I'm gonna leave. And I'm like, but what about Buzz and Jesse and Bullseye and all these other friends? Like, you're just leaving them without a second thought. And, and here's why I think it flies in the face of everything even more than the third one, honestly. Um, and what kind of does make it worse. If you were gonna separate Woody from the group in the end, anyway, Shows you why they, how they didn't know what they were doing. If you were going to do this, and you were going to do a Bo Peep plot line or whatever later on, why couldn't Andy have just taken him to college? The other original toys don't do anything important in this except kind of buzz anyway, and that's it. You could have rewritten that. Why if you... <laughs> Why didn't Andy take him to college then? Andy already abandoned him, and then Woody does the same thing to the rest of them and his kid, and his new kid, and it's, it's... It's so disappointing. Like, why would you go back on, came out in 1995, so 24 years of this franchise? What is the theme song for this franchise? You've got a friend in me. And you, even though it doesn't apply to Woody and Andy anymore, it always applied to Woody and Buzz. And now it doesn't. Because Woody left him like it was nothing. It wasn't even, it wasn't about Buzz or the other toys. It was just about this kid he's known a year. So of course it doesn't matter that he's leaving Bonnie. That's not the point. Even though the movie makes you really want to think that's the point. That's not what makes this so frustrating and disappointing. Again, if he was just leaving it, leaving the kid for both, they were the only two factors, was Bonnie or Bo. I could easily see why he'd pick Bo over Bonnie either way. But... When he picks Bo over literally everyone else, it 
it is so sad. It just makes me really sad and 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 frustrated uh, with with this film and with the choices they've made. Um, I think it was completely wrong. What are they trying to convey? Is it better for a toy to have a kid or not? Um, because you know, Bo the whole movie is like, you don't need a toy or you don't need a kid. Woody the whole time is like, oh no, we do need to have kids, and. Then Gabby Gabby gets what's definitely implied to be a happy ending, getting a kid. But then Woody's happy ending is him leaving his kid. So which is it? Because clearly they paint it as very black and white. Like in the script at least. Like there is no gray area in the dialogue. Not there's not even once do they actually say like, you know, maybe for some people it works and some it doesn't. So Woody and Bo are like, Godspeed, Gabby Gabby, but Woody, you're obsessed with your kid and you shouldn't be. And it just seems like, I'm not saying a lesson has to be spelled out for the audience, and a lot of people might be saying right now, um, oh, you don't get it, that's supposed to be what it is, that for some toys it works and some it doesn't. But if it does work for some toys, then Woody should be the one it works for, you know, I, after all this. And... Again, though, that's not even the biggest problem. It's that he leaves everyone else. And, again, you've got a friend in me. We belong together. Doesn't, not when you can meet back up with a girl you haven't seen in almost a decade, apparently. Um, you know, I, I, I pray this is the last one. Um, I don't know where they could go from here with them all separated. Because any time, like, I swear... Even though, yes, Woody is clearly the primary protagonist in these films, Buzz is clearly the secondary one. And when I hear the words Toy Story, I think of Buzz and Woody. I don't just think of one or the other, or even of the toys as a whole. I think of Woody and Buzz. That's what I think of when I think of Toy Story, and you've split them up. And, and even on, and again, this was the second thing I thought of on the drive home, going way back to, to what I said earlier. Um... One was about Buzz being too capable. The second thing, I was like, why does this bother me so much? Toy Story isn't even my favorite Pixar movie. Like, none of the Toy Story movies make it in my top five. Um, Toy Story 2 is pretty close, but it, it's not there. And I'm like, why does this bother me so much? The the ending of, the, of these last two movies. Why is it so frustrating? And I think it's just that... You know, thinking real hard about it. I have not had many close friends in my life, you know. Um, I'm not just saying this to, to be sad or, or to get pity or anything. But but it's it's honest. It's true. I have had many friends in my life. Uh, most of them have made it like summer camps. So you see each other maybe, you know, three or four years and then never again for the most part. You know, and I don't know many people. I mean, right now I pretty much just have, you know... My family and extended family, I think, including me and the dogs, there's there's about 15 of us, including the canines, and that's about it right now. And I've always just loved the idea of friendship, of people that like you or love you so much that, like, you guys voluntarily spend so much time together. And it's not even like, oh, we try to make this relationship work because we're blood and that's why we love each other, but we chose each other as humans we chose each other to be friends um that that's a huge deal for me like the unbreakable bonds that friendship can bring to people whether it's spouses best friends again siblings that are friends like there are so many different types of friendship and of love that that comes of that and woody threw literally all of it away for one girl that he hasn't seen in nine years and to me that is like so insane and he gets like very little closure with any of them before he leaves and it's like for me friendship and companionship um of any kind whether it ends up whether it's people you know from work from school from camp um people whether or not you're romantically involved with them just any kind of strong friendship i see is like really important and for this to be such a long-held bond between the characters and to be so easily broken because the plot demanded it, is it, it's really sucky. It's really bad. And 
you know, Toy Story 3 kind of made me angry. This one honestly just, like, I mean, I'm frustrated with it, but it just makes me sad. It just makes me sad. Um, like I said, there's some good points. I think the end of Gabby, Gabby Gabby's story is interesting. Uh, the animation, which I, I don't think I mentioned at all, uh, brilliant, gorgeous, the lighting, the textures, absolutely breathtaking. Um, the new characters, Forky and Ducky and Bunny, all super cute and super well done. Um, very well voiced, but the heart of this movie, the whole point of this movie is Woody and his story and it completely negates literally everything and everyone he knew and loved and had friendship with the past 10 to 20 years. And it's just gone. They just threw it out in one film pretty unceremoniously if you ask me. And like I said, overall, I like the film as a whole, I think it is less unpleasant than three because three is kind of unpleasant with all the torture and prison and stuff for me at least I, I don't like that stuff very much um at least in that in that film and in this franchise i thought it was it was weird this one is just so much more i don't i don't even know because again it's like just so disappointing and just so poorly done i think it was just not let up to very well and it just it just sucks just it just sucks and and just the more I think about it the sadder I am about it and I didn't think even when I predicted in my own head that that was what was gonna happen I I didn't realize how sad I'd actually be until it happened until I until I have been thinking about it and even just talking about it the last the last like I don't know by the time this is edited 30 something 30 minutes yeah it's it's weird and I, I do not like it. And if you liked it, I'm, I'm glad. If you, if you liked it, good for you. Maybe you got something totally different out of it. Um, but for me, just the, again, not even just the lessons, but the themes of friendship and of the bonds of friendship were just completely disintegrated for no reason other than that's what the writers felt like doing. So it's it's not for me. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm gonna go get some comfort with my toys and I'll see you guys later.